You know that experience of going to a milonga and seeing a dancer that you really love dancing with and trying to get a dance with them and obviously being rejected. That experience. I had one of those recently. And I also talked to some people who've had these kinds of experiences recently. So I thought I would bring this up. Um, and talk about this idea of ghosting, right? We all are familiar with the concept. It's actually something that I feel everybody experiences in life in general. I was at a big tango event and there was a leader that I used to dance with all the time. And it, it's been a really long time since I'd seen him. I think this was the first time I saw him post COVID and we greeted each other at the beginning of the event and you know i of course put my my feelers out there and try to grab his attention but it was really obvious that he wasn't interested and i remember at the end of the event i actually came up and gave him a hug and said something like Oh, you know, I'm sorry we didn't get to share an embrace this time. And just the way he answered, maybe it was me projecting my fears, but it really felt like it was intentional. Like he didn't say, oh, yeah, me too. I'm so sorry. I'll catch you next time. Like there was not that energy. And it stung a little bit in that way that you start questioning, like, what what's wrong? What did I do? Is there something I could have done better? Did I say something? And in my case, I was like, maybe it's because his girlfriend doesn't like me, <laughs> which I absolutely have no evidence of that. Seriously. Like, it's just my mind throwing that out there because I'm really looking for some reason that would make sense to me. And that's what we do. That's what we do when these things happen, right? And the other day, I actually got an email from uh, one of the dancers that uh, I know in the community. And the title of the email was just broken. And she described this very similar experience where she had this amazing tanda with someone. It was just seventh heaven and she complimented the guy and was very excited to dance with him. And then he ignored her the rest of the weekend. And she also threw out those same questions. Of what's wrong with me? What did I do? What did I not do? Like, what is wrong with me that they don't want to dance with me? And I think ultimately, sometimes there is an explanation. And I talk a lot about that in other episodes that it's, it's hard not to take things personally, but then also that's kind of what we have to choose to do because everybody's in their own little worlds and we don't really know where the other person's at. We assume that they're in the same place. Like she even said, she thought that he had the same great time. Like she was having an amazing time. And the possibility that he might not be having the same amazing time as her is really painful because it sort of questions our experience of reality a little bit. There's this feeling of like, oh, am I making this up? And the other person is really not enjoying it. And then you can get a little paranoid. <laughs> but that's the reality that the other person is their own little universe. And what's going on in there, we will never know. We can 
project our expectations on it and we can have some sort of understanding of patterns of behavior, but it's very frequent that people will do something that we completely don't expect. So I started thinking about other experiences of ghosting in life, not just in tango, because it seems to me that the emotion of how it actually feels when we're being ghosted, whether it's on the dance floor or in life is actually pretty similar. And even though I haven't experienced ghosting to the level that some people have, I've heard of stories of people losing friendships after decades, all of a sudden one person just disconnects and leaves and literally disappears from someone's life. I've heard of family members doing that too. And the painful hole that that leaves in the other person is, yeah, it's pretty tragic. So I, I haven't experienced a lot of that, but, you know, I definitely have had my share of ghosting, like in dating, right? So that's a little bit more, probably a common experience that everyone goes through at some point in life where, you know, you really like someone and you feel like you're doing your best and they're kind of responding and then you're expecting them to be there and all of a sudden you can't reach them. So, so that's happened to me uh, when I've tried to date on OkCupid okay back in the day and I would go out with somebody and think that, you know, we had a great time, everything was wonderful and they say that they're going to call you or you're even making plans to go see a movie and then that day arrives and you never hear from them and they never call you and they don't, res they don't respond. And, you know, one time that this happened to me, I was so obsessed with figuring out what happened that I made up all these ideas about, oh, they must have gotten in a wreck or they're in the hospital somehow or something happened. Like my mind was really reaching for some plausible reason why they would not reach out to me because the way I felt in their presence just the day before, I was totally certain that things were a certain way, right? And it's hard to believe, it's hard for me to accept that I would be so gullible that I would trust someone and not actually see through their facade. My other experiences of kind of ghosting energy has been from friends, friends that I got really close to and trusted and then something would happen and feelings would be hurt. And then suddenly, you know, that person's not really in your life anymore and you're not interacting the same way. Some of my close friends have shared their tragic stories of friendship breakups where one person just becomes a different person altogether. Sometimes it's like something psychologically different. Uh, a person gets off their medication. Uh, this is something that happened recently to a friend of mine. Her roommate was on a particular type of medication and then got off the medication and became a completely different person <laughs> altogether. So, that can happen and it it sort of shakes you in the in this way that's very traumatic like there's not a resolution there you can't find your way to like a particular thing that you can say okay this is the reason it's happening and if i can just understand this piece it all is going to make sense and it's not going to be so painful we all strive to resolve that pain from then on you know, I've, I talk to people who remember these things for years and years. And even when I think of tango dancers, you know, there could be a whole night of dancing, six hour milonga, and somebody will remember one tanda because somebody insulted them or hurt them in some way or ignored them. And they'll talk about that one person that wronged them instead of the rest of the evening, right? It's like somehow we're primed to 
focus our mind more on this negative thing because it's like it's failing our expectations in some way. And we need to figure out why this is happening because we want to protect ourselves, right? We want to protect ourselves from this happening in the future. And it definitely feels difficult when your trust is broken in some way and you don't find an explanation. You never get a chance to have sort of a clarifying conversation with the other person and you need to move on and it feels rough. Like it feels difficult to then um, choose to trust again, choose to make friends again, choose to connect again. There's definitely that questioning like, well, if this happened to me before, it's going to happen again. There must be something wrong with me intrinsically and I need to figure that out. So I need to find out what I need to fix about myself in order for this thing not to happen again. You know, another area of life where I experience this a lot is professionally. Professional ghosting, I think, is just part of the experience. And I really fought against it. Like, I couldn't believe that people would do it the way they did. And especially when it was in the field of art. I was a professional artist for some years out of college and I was dealing with a lot of galleries and collectors and trying to hustle and build my, build my reputation and getting gallery visits and talking to people. Lots of people promised me lots of things, opportunities, sales. They would say that they're interested in buying something and then I would never hear from them. I mean, how many times I've had a person come into my studio look at a painting, say that they want to buy it, leave, and then I never hear from them again. Like that's happened so many times. And every time I really took it personally that there was something wrong with me. <laughs> and it, uh, it haunted me until I realized that actually this, uh, this is something that's just part of the experience in the professional world. And people do this kind of thing all the time. And maybe even I have done it to someone else. I, as I was thinking about this episode and imagining what kinds of stories I wanted to share, I had to be honest with myself that there are times in my life that I've ghosted people. And those times are kind of just as inexplicable to me as they are probably to the other person. And there are people right now that I have refused to talk to and just kind of exited their life without any explanation because I felt like that's what I needed to do for myself. And to me, it's sort of apparent and obvious that that's my next step. But to the other person, definitely, it, it might not make the most sense why I'm all of a sudden not around or not talking to them. So this inexplicable type of experience emotionally of, of ghosting is, I think, something that's part of our daily life in certain ways. We're always afraid of it. We're afraid of people letting us down and we're afraid of putting ourselves out there because there's a possibility that we might be let down. It's also true that for every experience of ghosting, we, I think, experience the opposite as well because everything in life exists in this duality. And although our minds are primed to look towards the negative sometimes and identify places where things aren't working. When it comes to human connection and friendships and trust and community, we have to admit that we have a lot of experiences where there's this magic that happens. Nowhere is this as apparent as it is in tango because Yes, you might have that ghosting experience where somebody doesn't want to dance with you, like this guy that I mentioned earlier in the episode. He didn't want to dance with me. And that thought crossed my mind a few times throughout the event. But 
I had so many other dances and I connected with so many other people. And I had to remind myself when there were a few t more times at that event that I actually got rejected, which I'm not used to being rejected. And I think people typically think that I never get rejected, but you know what I do. And it stung in the same way of like, well, what's wrong with me? Why are you not saying yes to me? But the bliss that we experience magically with other people is just as inexplicable as the pain that we experience when somebody ghosts us, right? Like we should, I think the a good piece of advice would be for us to shift our focus and think about all the people that actually want to connect with us and the examples of when we magically serendipitously connected with the person who ended up being really relevant in our lifetime. I have to remind myself of that because it's so easy to look at the pain that is caused by this feeling of someone is really is letting me down. Somebody's really rejecting me and they don't want me. And it, it's such a powerful hook that we can get caught in it. And now we suddenly find ourselves obsessing over things that are completely outside of our control. Ultimately, we can't control the other person liking us or not liking us. And even when I try to make myself attractive to someone in some particular way, it's always a guess. It's always sort of a hunch. It's never a guarantee that it's going to happen. So we can't take it as proof that there's something wrong with us when someone doesn't see us the way that we expect them to. The other thing that's important to recognize is that there's probably a lot more people ghosting us and we might not even be aware of it. <laughs> there's a spectrum and, you know, I, I frequently talk about this. I remind myself about this all the time. Whatever emotional experiences we have in life and in tango, a lot of times are they're reflections of where we're at in our own growth and our maturity level. And when it comes to this pain that somebody specifically is not paying attention to us or giving us, um, the energy that we, that we want from them. I try to remind myself to ask this question of like, why them? What's so special about them? <laughs> why do you care so much about this person? And typically there'll be some interesting answers that I'm not going to share with you right now, but I'm happy to talk to you about this in other ways. So if you, have stories to share, or if you want to chat about these kinds of things, please make sure you reach out to me on social media. I am at I am S O Tango. I'm so Tango. And also, if you're not already part of my private Facebook group, uh, you should check it out. It's a community of social dancers, and this group is really dedicated to having an open, safe friendly dialogue about this crazy thing that we all do. So check it out. The link is in the show notes, but I learn a lot about myself through this process of just wondering why this person in particular <laughs> is getting to me so much because sometimes you might have a person who's ignoring you and you don't even know, and it doesn't even matter. So one story that I recently heard from a friend was that she danced with this guy at one point and then he ignored her the rest of the time and she didn't care. She moved on. It was like, he was not that high on her radar. It was a fine dance, but she kind of didn't really notice it that much. She just registered that he wasn't dancing with her. Well, then months later he messaged her and wanted to explain why he was ignoring her and telling her that, you know, she should understand that he had other people who are closer to him that, 
you know, that required more of his attention or some, some sort of an excuse. And it doesn't really matter to me when I heard this story. I didn't really care what the excuse is, but the fact that he admitted that he was actually ignoring her was uh, kind of funny because she didn't even register that. And to her, it was kind of out of the blue, like, why are you messaging me? I don't even know who you are. And, you know, that can be sort of also an energy that we feel towards different people. So some people ghosting us, it doesn't really bother us because they're not really, I guess, not fulfilling us in a certain way, or maybe they're not attractive to us in a certain way. Like, I don't know what it is that makes certain people more capable of hurting our feelings than others. And maybe it really depends on this experience of you have this heavenly, incredible tanda with someone and the way you have it with that person, then that person becomes your source for, of experiencing that. So maybe then that feeling of vulnerability that makes you more susceptible to feeling hurt when that person doesn't reciprocate. But I guess the important lesson here, there's a couple of things that I want to convey through this discussion. One is it's, it's shifting ground, right? This whole idea of ghosting, why people ghost, why sometimes it hurts and sometimes it doesn't. And we haven't even talked about ghosting as a temporary thing. Sometimes it's just a cyclical thing. People kind of go through their cycles and they ignore you for a while and then they come back into your life. Like that also happens in life. So it's shifting ground. That experience of this inexplicable pain due to someone else failing us and leaving us in pain, hurting for years and requiring or needing an explanation and, and having this feeling of an open wound, right? Always these wounds that are left over from past connections that hurt for years and years. Like that is part of life. There are experiences like that for everyone. It's a rite of passage. Just like it is a rite of passage to experience extreme joy and love and connection and ties with the community and being accepted and celebrated, like those are all part of this paradoxical experience called life. That it's not like it's always supposed to be this way and nobody's ever going to hurt you if you just do this one thing and you need to be a good citizen to make sure nothing bad happens to you. Like that's just going to make you paranoid because trying to control for things you can't control is very difficult and impossible. So it's true that when we get hurt like that, whether it's on the dance floor or in life, we're just supposed to pick up and move on and continue to try to connect with other people and continue to make ourselves vulnerable, fully acknowledging that we might get hurt again and the people that we trust might let us down. That's the reality of it. And it does not make sense to us, to our brain, especially when we're attached to certain definitions of reality and we're saying, but it shouldn't be this way. And we like argue with reality. But when it's right in front of you and somebody is failing you and causing you all this pain, there is no reason for it other than it's happening and you have to accept that it's happening and it's going to hurt and there's going to be that pain and then you're going to move on from that pain and you're going to connect with someone else. It was such a hard lesson for me to learn because every time I broke up with someone when I was younger, it was such a traumatic event. I didn't eat for months. I was depressed. I couldn't get over this person. And one of my biggest, uh, 
failed romances early on, I was in so much pain. And I met this uh, person one day and um, he asked me how I was doing. And then so I shared with him that I just broke up with someone and I'm heartbroken, which typically the response I got from that would be, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that sucks. And but he was like, oh, cool. So you're ready to date again? <laughs> you're getting out there? All right, let's go. Let's go. Like, And I was like, what? What? I, I couldn't do that. I'm in too much pain. Like, this is this hurts so much. But he had a point and he talked in it, about it in this way that it's like, yeah, it sucks. It hurts. It There's no explanation for it. There's never going to be something that they say that, that gives you that peace of mind. Like, okay, now it all makes sense and I can move on. Like, granted, sometimes that does happen and you have that closure. That's awesome. Closure is great. <laughs> but I'm talking about instances where you don't have closure and you must move on without closure. And in my mind, the poetic part of this is that that's why tango exists. That's what tango music is all about, ultimately. Whatever the meaning of the lyrics is, and whatever historical context we give to them, I think ultimately all the tangueros and tango composers and musicians and singers, what they're trying to get at through their craft, through their art, is this particular inexplicable pain and nostalgia and longing and sadness. All of these emotions that we don't know what to do with. We don't know how to make sense of it when someone rejects us in a way that we just completely didn't even expect or don't think we deserve. There is nowhere to put that there's not like a resolution in us. And that's what this music is about. And I think that's why we need to continue dancing in this really very practical way. Adam Ilonga, when you get ghosted by somebody and it hurts and you might think I need to leave because now I can't dance because it hurts too much to think that this one person doesn't appreciate who I am, you know, but it's like, no, that's exactly why you should dance because it hurts because there is no answer because there is no safety. There is no guarantee that these things won't happen again. There's a famous quote I want to finish with by Pina Bausch that I read years ago. And you probably have heard it too. As a dancer, I feel like it circulates around. It says, dance, dance. Otherwise, we are lost. And I've meditated on this quote for a long time, and I had different interpretations of what it meant. But the more I sit with it and the more I thought about this topic of ghosting, this quote really connected to that experience of inexplicable pain of loss of loss of connection with someone and failure of trust, right? Like we have that as part of the tapestry of life. We have that as part of our daily life. Sometimes we have to feel it on many levels and we have to move on and continue to deal with it. And as tango dancers, I think the dance floor is a place for us to do something with these emotions and to find a place to commune about this. You know, I, I frequently think of us dancing all together and every couple, you know, every single person has their own emotional stuff that they're bringing to the dance floor. And the music is our vehicle, our mechanism for making peace with this kind of pain in our life. And whether somebody ghosts you or not, whether somebody rejects you or not, really your job is to accept that it's happening and continue to pursue what you're after 
So when it comes to the dance floor, just keep dancing. We are all evolving through connection with each other. And especially as dancers, you know, I think of this a lot that we help form each other. We help shape each other over the years that we dance together. And even the ghosting, whether you ghost someone else or someone does that to you, that shapes you as well. It does not mean that you're doing anything wrong or that you need to change. You just need to continue dancing. Dance, dance, because without it, we are lost. Thanks so much for joining this winding banter. We'll continue the banter next week. Until then, ciao.